I'm here with Kim Edelman. Kim is the founder and president of Plugging Conversions out of San Diego area. And he is here with us in Omaha, Nebraska, the home of EV World. And he has just completed the uh, conversion of the Prius behind us. So, uh, Kim, welcome to, uh, to EV World again. And uh, Thanks, last Bill. time we did this a couple of years ago, you had just completed your own car. Now you've, uh, you've made a business out of this. So tell us about uh, the, uh, the car that you've just converted here. It's the 2009 Prius, and we took out the original pack and put in a pack that's about six times the size of the original battery. We were able to charge up last night for about six hours, and today we went over 20 miles all electric. And uh, it was a couple of the guys' first experience all electric, and I think they enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. So how did this come about? We're at our local power company here, Omaha Public Power District. How did uh, how this uh, project come about? Oh, about a year and a half ago when we were advertising for people to send us deposits so they could get on our list, Omaha Pub Public Power was one of the first to do that, and they were very patient through our first generation and second generation and uh, difficulties we finally were able to solve. We hung in there with them, they hung in there with us, and here we are with uh, our first third generation system. Okay, now this project began actually a couple of weeks ago um, that you and uh, Carolyn Colette, Col Coquelet, Coquelet uh, from Luscious Garage and your father were here working on that project. Uh, so you almost got it done. So tell us a little bit about that. We were real close. In fact, if we hadn't had tornadoes and a lot of press that first day, <laughs> we would have finished in, the, in our two day yeah. time slot. We knew our first one would take a couple of days and we'll have it down to probably uh, less than a day at this point. But everything went very well at the last minute, the most unexpected thing, my computer wouldn't talk to the charger. So we'll just blame the computers for that. We'll, we'll blame uh, Mr. Gates at Microsoft and okay. leave it at that. Okay, so you came back out here yesterday, basically yesterday on Wednesday evening, but started on a Thursday. So you were able to finish the car. Right, we had it working in two hours. Yeah, as soon as I got hours. here. Yep. Okay. Now, what is different about your plug-in conversion kit from what others are offering? Tell us a little bit about what makes yours unique. One of the biggest differences is that we do take out the OEM pack completely. That pack is a nickel metal hydride pack, and our pack is also nickel metal hydride. So we're able to put our very large 6.1 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride pack back in the car. It's as easy as taking out the original one and sticking in the new one. All the original systems are used because the car was designed for nickel metal. So the car is very happy with our pack. We use all their safety systems, every monitoring system that was designed by Toyota to continue having the car work just the way it was designed with the addition of electric only driving. Okay, now this particular pack you're going to be offered, what, what, what you put in here was actually a third generation, the first prototype of a third generation pack? This is beyond prototype. This is okay. a, our first production version third generation system. Okay, um, so what might, you know, if people are interested in getting a vehicle like this or getting the conversion done, what's the, the procedure? They would go to our website and download the form, send us a deposit to get a position on our production schedule, and soon after that they either bring us the car or we arrange to have somebody in their city or uh, even we possibly would go to their location and convert their car in less than a day. Okay. Now this is going to cost typically what? $12,500 right now okay. installed. Okay. Now the, the, the vehicle here has sort of walk us through the performance characteristics of this car. You can't drive this car in electric mode at typical freeway speeds, right? No, not right now. Okay, so the person, when they're driving it on electric, they're going to be driving what, at 35 miles an hour or so? At 34 and a half miles an hour, Okay. the engine does come on. Okay. As soon as you drop below 34, it automatically goes back into EV mode. On the highway, we do have enhanced use of the, of the motor. So the engine works much less and the motors do work more on the highway. Mileage is typically 90 to 100 miles per gallon on the highway, okay. depending on terrain. If it's flat, very good mileage. Okay, so you today, as testing the vehicle, drove it over to a uh, local uh, Toyota dealer to do some checking on some things. What kind of uh, performance were you getting there? We went about 
20 miles, all electric, and I think the engine came on once because we had to go a little bit faster than 35 for a second. Mileage was about 165 miles per gallon for the 20 mile trip. Wow, that's amazing. So, how long will it take then to recharge this car? If you have it and you've got a 110 volt outlet in your garage, how long will it take to recharge it? About six hours at 120. It will take, the same charger will also do 240 charging a little bit faster, about one and a half times as fast, so about four hours. And we have a fast charge option that will charge the car in two to three hours. Okay. Um, so how's business? More than we can handle. <laughs> now you've got a trip, I understand, coming up. You're, this is sort of getting some international exposure as well. Do you want to care to talk about that? It is. We have systems going in in Hong Kong with Power Utilities and uh, other companies in Hong Kong. We have systems going in in Australia with the, uh, it's called CSIRO, which is uh, like the American version of the National Science Foundation. We have some systems that will be going in in Canada and have also had interest from Costa Rica and Mexico and uh, I think Austria too, okay. if I remember. Okay. Now, one of the things that you're having to deal with being in California is uh, the California Air Resources Board, and they've put in some policies into effect that's going to affect your business somewhat because they're obviously concerned about emissions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Their concern is that you don't put a system in that causes emissions to become worse instead of better. And of course, by emissions, their concern is not CO2, it's other emissions. Okay, so? So they have to come up with something to regulate the vehicle because as of now, anybody doing a conversion in California is actually violating the emissions anti-tampering laws. So without an experimental permit, which we do have, but without that, anybody doing a conversion in California is violating the uh, Air Resources Board rules. So they're coming up with a program where we will be able to sell these to customers and kind of uh, slowly ease into more and more regulations the more systems we sell. They're making it uh, possible for us. CARB has been very good. Okay. So how are you dealing with that then, your system, to come into compliance? We are meeting all their requirements. Our system does do what they expect having to do with onboard diagnostics and having to do with EV only mode not affecting the initial cold start of the engine. So we're working on all these things and we're going through, we are going through the approval process and that should be completed probably within the next two or three months. Okay. Uh, a, a question that often gets asked is people say, that's an awful lot of money to save a little bit of gas, especially with the price of gasoline being down at the moment. Mm -hmm. So what, how do you respond to that? The time isn't right to try and save money with a system like this. When gas is six or seven dollars a gallon, probably be able to break even in about five years. So financially at that point, it'll be realistic. Right now it's early adopters and people that want to make a statement and be an example of something we can do right now to make a serious impact on global warming, especially CO2 levels coming out of automobiles. So some of us are going to have to do what's necessary right now. There's no time to wait anymore. And people that know this are ready to do what it takes and spend what they have to spend to make a difference. All right, now you've got how many cars out at this point that would have various versions of your system in them? We're up to about 20. About 20 right cars, mm -hmm. okay. So what do you expect to do this year? Now that you've got stimulus bills and things of that uh, nature. I think we will do over 100 this year and the goal for next year is 1,000. Wow, excellent. Well, you will keep us posted. I know you've got some other things happening that you'll talk about, I guess, later when it becomes appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. <laughs> you are, you are a, a uh, loquacious individual. <laughs> loquacious. That's an interesting one. There's an interesting one. Kim, thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. Okay.